slow YouTube. Miser Fracken is up in here with some trivia. I don't think Cloud Strife is the answer to any of the trivia questions, but there's definitely Runaway the Dream of the Turtle questions in there. Uh, last week we... What did we do last week? Went through a jungle, caught a lemur, rode a bull, and now we're trying to rescue a parrot. Our next, our next course of action. Uh, what does my inventory look like? There's like four items in here. Hmm. Who is O'Connor? Is this O'Connor? Anyways. <laughs> Brian very quickly making his way over to O'Connor. Ayo Lonnie, the girl with like 45. You gotta get that darn bird back, pronto. I'll tell O'Connor to climb up and get him. And in the meantime, I'll take the opportunity to slip the doctored photo into his book. That'll kill two birds with one stone. Oh, don't kill the bird. Hey, O'Connor, there's a parrot up in that palm tree. Use that training of yours to get it down here, ASAP. Sir, yes, sir. No, oh, uh, O'Connor, what have you done? Oh, poor little beast, you killed it. Oh, man. man. Better hide the carcass quick before Lucky Lonnie sees it. Lucky thing, my pockets are huge, and I can keep Aolani far from little demon. Everyone knows how wild animals can get after a long siesta. It's strange, though. I didn't see any blood or a bullet hole. Of course not, sir. I shot one millimeter above its head. Just enough for the speeding bullet to make it fall. What? But it's dead as a doorknob. Must have been the scare, sir. You didn't mention the bird had a weak heart, sir. In that case, I should have used stones, which are almost as effective, but not so frightening. Are you pulling my leg? Negative, sir. Do you know any man able to shoot someone with just one bullet from a distance of one kilometer in a headwind? Uh, no. Me neither. Uh-huh. Is that all? Don't you have anything else to say? Do you need more information, sir? What about? Uh, just forget it. Don't try to find any hidden meaning. I didn't get that either. By the mm. way, when I commented on killing two birds with one stone, I didn't mean it to be so literal. Anyway, at least the doctored photo is now in place. As for the bird, who knows? I guess I'll need a miracle now. All right, so last week we discovered that uh, there's a guy on the beach whose grandpa was the uh, the chicken summoner. So, I assume we're going to him. So I got, the stream got muted last week. <laughs> During the section here. Yeah, chicken arise. Arise chicken. Uh, so yeah, if the stream gets whatever. Because this music is the only copyrighted song in the entire game. <laughs> it was while we were talking to this guy, even. Uh, hold on. How do I get out of here? We, we, I went, so like, this important fella... <laughs> It tells us that he can bring chickens back to life. Uh... Anyways. Probably got muted again the anyways. must be a monster on the waves. But he's a lazy dog in that hammock. Ah, it's chicken. probably a waste of time. But I've been helped out in stranger ways. Stranger ways? Kai, I bet you can also revive poultry, like your grandpa. I'm not so sure, Brian. I haven't seen poultry around here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. Would a parrot do? Hey, brah. That's Aolani. What happened to him? 
Well, I guess he kind of flew to bluer skies, but... Bluer skies? No, brah, he's not fully dead, just kind of dead, which means he's slightly unalive, or what we could call provisionally dead. I think the technical expression the kahunas use is, he has a life ache. I don't think I can help the bra out, but even so, there's a little problem. I could only try to revive him in the Hawaii where my grandpa lived, in his witch doctor hut, and I can't remember where that's at, brah. But didn't you say your grandpa used to take you there a lot? Yeah, but I was just a little tyke, and I never paid attention to the directions. I looked for it like a million times, but no can do, brah. I remember mm, yeah. it was like toward the northwest of the island. There were a bunch of graves by it and, well, that's all. Plus, without my leg, I need some amazing airs to reach that part of the island. Hmm. Darn. I thought I had the answer to my troubles. I'll have to attempt to locate that hut. But if the soldiers are keeping watch on most of the island, I doubt they'll let me search all over the place. All right. Let's see. I'd like to talk with the colonel again. Got it. Again? You're lucky I'm so friendly. Anyone else would have sent you packing. Don't take your eyes off him, Felton. Leslie, that civilian from before wants to talk to the colonel again. All right. Couldn't well, they just call him Leslie? Lead the civilian into the colonel's tent, as you order. That is whatever his this title is. Wants to have a word with the colonel. One moment, my colonel. Thank you, Felton. You come here, please. Mr. Uh huh. I've taken note, my colonel. Your name? Brian Basco. Well, Mr. Basco, wait here. Ah, uh, Basco. Mr. Uh, what's his face? Wishes to speak with you, my colonel. Who? Uh, tell him I'm asleep. Flower pot. But he can hear you speaking right now, my colonel. Well, I must be speaking in my sleep, flower pot. No, daddy, you're more of the snoring type. Flower pot, that memory of yours is worse than a senile old general's. Get mm. into that thick skull of yours that there are no mommies or daddies in the army. Get over here a minute. I need to explain something. And pull those shirt tails right out of your pants. You look like a mama's boy. Look here, Lester. Why do you think I call you flower pot? Well, we've heard we this conversation before. Anyway. Leslie and I truly have identical penmanship. I want you to write right in the notebook. Well, if I could think of something that would work. Okay, the island. I may not get anywhere by doing this, but what the heck. Alright, so we're going to trick these guys into finding the hut for us. No, Leslie told me to stay put, ah. and that thing's surrounded by soldiers. I'd better not loiter around. Out of my sight, flower pot. You can come in, Mr. Whatever you're called. Thanks. Tobasco. Mr. Brian Tobasco. I see you enjoy ticking me off. Answer. What are you doing on my island? Um... The truth is, I came to see whether I could pick up that waitress at Luana Beach. That's a lost war, son. From the <laughs> lieutenant colonel to the latrine scrubber, all my men have tried. But that lady is the toughest coconut to crack in the Pacific. Ah. What about you? Have you tried? Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> I tried, but she's in love with some one-eyed soldier. Won't even pay attention to me. I can't believe it. Another man. Well, just follow my orders. Tell her I'm the sensitive type. That I like to take strolls in the evening, candle at dinners at night, and the sweet smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> uh... <laughs> There's something else I wanted to tell you about that waitress. You don't mean to tell me you've hit a home run with her, do you? Uh, no. I don't want to talk about that girl. I don't even think she's attractive. Either you're lying or you're dumber than I thought. Anyway, I still don't know what you're doing on my island. Was uh, the dead bird in here? Oh. I don't feel like talking to you anymore. Just for the record, you're not leaving because you want it. You're leaving because I threw you out. Mosey along, civilian. Time to mosey along. That's the like third Metal Combat question we've gotten. Let's see. Only the second. I'd like to talk with the Colonel again. Again? Don't take your eyes off him, Felton. All right, now we're going back to get the coordinates because apparently they found them. Leslie, back civilian. All right, as you order. Leslie, this is the guy who wanted to buy to me. One moment, Mike. Thank you. You come here, please. Mr. Stupid Gold Theodore. Uh huh. The gun as usual. And the buy one to you. Ryan Basco. Well, wait here. Oh, Mr. Toe Basco. Mr. Uh. Who? Uh. What he can? I must be. No, Dad. Flower pot. That memory. Get it through that. Get over here. In both those shirt tape. Look here, Lester. To be lit. No. It's such an. If the troops knew I, they'd lose that. You get. Lucky thing, Leslie writes down all the orders in there. Ah. Uh... Oh, forget it. Oh, for. Hmm. Should have mentioned. He's supposed to mention the coordinates. Just one more thing, sir. Oh, here we go. The coordinates of the uninhabited hut are 24 minutes, 38.1 seconds north, and 157 degrees, 2 minutes, and 10 seconds west. I better jot that down before I forget. And why am I already I forgot? I care about that. Pull those shirt tails out of your britches. You're not in grammar school anymore. I wish I had a GPS. Then I wish I had a GPS. Find Kite's grandpa's head in two shakes of a parrot's tail. Out of my sight, flower pot. You can come in, Mr. Whatever you're called. Thanks. Ryan Westhouse. I see you enjoy kicking me off. Answer. What are you doing on my island? Uh I don't feel like talking to you. Just Mosey Moseying along. Got the coordinates. Need a GPS. They're still O'Connors. Soldier O'Connor. 
Sir, yes, sir. Mm. You weren't equipped with a GPS device by any chance, were you? Shoot, sir. I knew you'd find me out in the end. Excuse me? I've been a fool, sir. I should have told you from the very beginning. Told me what? I lost it, sir. The what? GPS? Yes, sir. I swear I had it when I left the camp, because I kept checking my coordinates before lunch. Then this rowdy kid came and chased me around. Maybe someone took advantage and stole it from me then, sir. Well, don't get your khakis in a knot over it. I will accept my punishment with honor and integrity, sir. Nobody's gonna punish you, O'Connor. However, Yet. if you do remember where you left it, or who might have stolen it from you, let me know. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Return to your position, soldier. And remember, I'm watching you. At your orders, sir! All right. It's time to finally, after all this time, save our game. Save. According to Knife, his little offspring is inside. And we're gonna meet... Walla. Oops. Whatever that said. Look at him. Just an innocent child playing with his console. I'll go That's a handheld. To cute thing. Hello, Koala. Want to chat with Uncle Brian? Well, I'll take that as a yes. Don't you know how to talk yet? Hmm. Well, this is just what I need. Rockman Forte. Getting this kid to speak is going to cause more blood, sweat, and tears than it did with Joshua. He doesn't seem to have anything I need anyway, though. Or does he? I can't see the screen, but from the sound. Wait a minute. O'Connor said he lost his GPS when he was chasing after some rowdy kid. Of course, it all adds up. Kai and Knife went to have their beer brunch at Lokilani's bar. And in the meantime, Koala was driving O'Connor nuts and stole the GPS, thinking it was a video game console. <laughs> that was me. Playing with GPS, thinking it was video games. To see if he answers. Let's see. Let me play your video game for a while. Guess that means no. Hmm. Who do you love more, mommy or daddy? Of course, since your dad is a space case. <laughs> This is a waste of time. I should just leave him alone. All right. Let's give him the drunk monkey. Yeah. I bet Koala will be stoked about the trade. Hey, nice boy. Give me that. I have a surprise for you. That snotty little brat. He almost bit my finger off. All right, we'll do this backward. Koala, look at this hideous beast. <laughs> this could get ugly. I'd better be moving along. I will just leave those two, whatever they're doing. Something tells me those two are going to get along just great. I hope it didn't break when it hit the ground. Nope. I guess the sand broke the fall, and it's still as good as new. I'll sure miss <laughs> Looks just like a wonder swan. But at least I got what I needed. Uh... Let's see if I can figure out how to use this contraption. Beep, boop, pop, boop, 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 boop. Excellent. Now, I just have to follow the instructions the GPS gives me, and sooner or later, I'll find the hut. Sooner or later. Let's Ten see. years later. I turn that way. 
I climb those rocks, then to the right, now I go straight. Bingo, no doubt about it. This must be the hut. I knew I'd end up finding it. Yeah, we did it. Let's see if it looks the way I expect. Now there's no doubt about it. This could only be a witch doctor's hut. If I'm not mistaken, it represents the spirits of their ancestors. It looks like a primitive throne. Primitive and spooky, if you ask me. Top eight, you're nice. I wish them well. Well, it's probably some sort of shrine. That guy in the portrait kind of looks like Kai. Must be his grandpa or some other ancestor. Hmm. Where are we going? Cove? Back to DMCA land. Use the metal detector on this thing right here. No, I have to get things done. What? I find it hard to believe the evil brat in that hut is the same person who sculpted this piece of art. No, I have to get things done. I... God dang it. It's truly grotesque. These witch doctors sure have a funny way of organizing their pantries, from what I see. Hmm. Remember reading that they were used for almost everything in some cultures, from cradles for uh, babies PS2. to battle shields. Dark Cloud One was one of the outfits. was one of the earliest PS2 games. Earlier, early yes, whatever. It's a very fancy toilet indeed. It's a bit imposing to know he comes from a long line of witch doctors. Hi, Genkai. Aloha, Brian. What's up? Uh... Hey, I know where your grandpa's hut is now. You're pulling my leg, brah. How'd you find it? I remember it was practically impossible to reach. Hey, I've never been that bad an explorer, and you must admit my sense of direction is pretty darn good. On the basis of the data you gave me, I began to walk northeast, paying proper <laughs> attention to the direction of the sun's rays and using the reflections of the sunlight off the dewdrops as a guide. Little by little, the plant life differed. So I knew I was on the right path, thanks to the undulations the Pacific Nor'easter causes in the leaves. At one specific location, I saw <laughs> that the spider webs shifted their concentric patterns for others more hexagonal, an unmistakable sign that I was approaching some sort of human settlement. In the end, I followed the flight path of the native crow, because you said there were some graves by the hut, and voila! There was the hut. You're one awesome bra. And to think that any other poser would have needed a GPS to find it. Uh, oh yeah, there are some real dimwits out there. The hut is located a few hours away, so let's get hopping. You'll have to hop on your own, brah. Without my prosthetic leg, I doubt I could get that far. Mm. I'll just keep strolling around the island. What's a capacitator? I'm just gonna keep sl meditating for a while. <laughs> Love them taters. Now 
No, I... Dang it. I find it hard to believe... Eternal Ring. Is that that's the um Dark Souls game? Uh something with so many uses can't just be left here. Eeny meeny miny mo. You're it. I don't see the reason for doing that. Very artistic, but not very useful. I'll keep it for the time being. Hmm. I there's there's a thing I need right there. Wait. I hope it's worth hauling such a heavy load around. I hope it's worth... No. I wish sculpture is one of his passion. It's sad to... I find it hard to believe... No. I have to get things done. How do I... I'm so confused. Um, now I talk about Orphan all the time. Amy, it's one of my favorite games. I also had an anime that I liked. The guy must. Hi, Genkai. Aloha, Brian. What's up? I've heard you. No big people who people plus it. It must maybe until you find someone missing the opposite leg. Or just a man. I a on the lips and an in and your and uh the hottest look you'll have without my prompts aloha I'm just gonna keep prosthetic leg is right here Sad. it's literally right here better learn use the metal detector no I have to get things done <laughs> I'm gonna have to check another god. Since 200 top PS1's game started, I'm already like 45 games in. What are you talking about? Alright, I'm going through another guide. Let's see if I can figure out what is wrong. In the meantime, we're going to listen to these birds, and I'll get another DMCA warning.
It's uh, this guy says I oh, you just Hi Genkai. Aloha, Brian. Did you tell of course what up? Not as much since then I look at things from up. I got my parents, I took knife and I started to study. But mainly it helped. I'm curious about your... It's a leg made of flexible black metal, especially for athletes. But I don't think you can see it, brah. Knife's kid koala stole it from me this morning. The little rugwag was playing with the sand, and I guess he used it as a shovel. Who knows where he hit it? I know where he hit it. I'm... Why didn't I think of that before? Uh... If Dang it, Brian. Using the prosthetic leg as a shovel. It may be buried near the turtle. <laughs> ah, of course. Right out of you. Here it is. It's just the way Kai described it. Okie dokie. <clears throat> it's a bit imp- Hi, Genkai. Aloha, Brian. What's up? Found your leg. Uh. Hey, you put. I remember. Hey, on the big thing, little soy and what and in and you and uh, uh are you with speed? I fed. Cowabunga, brah. Cowabunga, now you brah. Get up from that hammock. Your butt must have a nasty hammock imprint by now. Uh, well, yeah. Actually, my other leg is totally asleep, too. Maybe I should keep meditating for a while, brah. To see if it wakes up. But hey, I owe you one. Actually. Why don't we go to your grandpa's hut to revive the parrot? All right, brah, but keep it cool. Hurring is for the weak of bladder and bad burglars. You can't <laughs> imagine how many memories this brings back, brah. The throne, the tikis, the turtle shells. By the way, did I tell you that my kapuna discovered an underwater tunnel that goes beneath the island? Turns out the sea hmm. turtles pass through it to reach the lake and enjoy mating season. Cause Kai, could you explain this to me some other day? If we wait too long, poor Aolani <laughs> may end up with a terminal case of life ache. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Wait a sec. I'm gonna put on my working gear. <sighs> okay. Let's just hope he doesn't doze off while he's changing. Bad news, brah. Man, that was speedy. I can't find my Kapuna's grammarium anywhere. Grammarium? Yeah, his book of spells. That's where his poultry reviving spell is. So if we don't find it, I can't get Aolani to snap out of it. Maybe we should split up to search around. All right, where do you want me to look? Hmm, I got it. You search the physical plane of existence, brah. And I'll explore the spiritual side. I'm gonna start meditating right <laughs> away. This guy's a genius. Find it. Man, is he a lazy bum or what? Well, better get down to searching. <laughs> All right. Looks like it, but it's... Yeah, I'll wake him up. <clears throat> Kai? Kai? Yeah, you gotta speak loudly. Kai? Coming. Hey, brah. How's it hanging? Tell me more about the Grim Grimoire. Could you tell me about your grandpa's book of spells? Sorry, I'm a bit shaky on the wave today, brah. But that always happens when I get back from the astral plane. Just now, I was gazing at the statue of the poultry god, standing in the Tiki Temple. It's awful that those soldiers took over a site that was so sacred to my people. What do you want to know about the grammarians? I went to the far plane. 
Uh... Could you describe your average grammarian for me? It's not like a general rule, brah. Every kahuna makes and decorates his grammarian whatever way he wants. However, the more it weighs, the better, because that means it's got lots of spells inside. <sighs> My kapunas was pretty lightweight, but he won several intra-interlar design competitions thanks to those metal book covers. <laughs> Guy's a genius. There's no special place where grammaria are usually stored? You never store grammarium, brah. A good kahuna is always supposed to keep it on him. Until death and beyond. So it's probably inside your grandpa's coffin. Well, yeah, now that you say so, that would explain why it's not sitting around. Well, getting back to our previous topic. <laughs> Amy just guessed like every male name. All the way up to Robert. See ya. Sorry for disturbing your spiritual search. Don't sweat it, bro. I can shift between the material and metaphysical planes faster than a tidal wave. And anyway... <laughs> it's a- it's a triple bob. There's Bob, Bob, and Robert. The triple bob. Looks like it's saying, Oh. Oh. Pog champ. Looks like a primitive cemetery. It doesn't even have a refreshment stand. Bomber Bobbert. Kai said the book covers were made of metal. And what better place than a grave to store it? Here. Not here. Better try every single one of them. Here neither. <laughs> Want to make your game longer than the longest journey? Put as many graves as possible and make him go through every single one of them. Looks like one of those fake body parts that seem to be a prominent feature of Kai's family may have set it off. But it's more likely to be his grandpa's book. I have just the shovel. Desecate, desecrate, grave of Kai's grandfather. The valuable help of turtle shell. Huh, this isn't exactly the handiest shovel, but it'll do the trick for digging. The truth is, my stomach is a bit upset over the idea of what I might find in there. I wish I didn't have to look while I dig. Hey, this isn't gonna be pretty, so, uh... <clears throat> I clicked Desecrate a Grave. Amy, I'm surprised at how little you know about One Piece. <laughs> <clears throat> Finally made it to the coffin. Let's open the lid respectfully. Oh shoot, it broke. Maybe actually. Oh, this guy sure got hit with the ugly stick. And he's missing an arm, just like <laughs> Kai mentioned. So where's the book? I'm not seeing it. Oh, ugh. they must have placed it over his chest. But for obvious reasons, it gradually fell a bit lower. And now it's caged between several ribs. I guess it's time to operate. Uh, Amy, I... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Amy, I assume you haven't heard all the controversy Ooh, recently then. Funny bone. Take out his spare rib for zero dollars. Well, the real prize here is getting Keeney's grammarium. Ugh, it's covered with maggots. Down, you beast. Okay, here goes. Keeney Papamoa's grammarium. Da -da -da -da. This is one bodacious old book. Yeah, there's two now, trans characters. Let's hand it over to Kai. And people are surprised. <laughs> it's not the Wait first one. If I don't give it to him, the parrot will die all the way. But if I do give it to him, he'll know I opened his grandpa's grave, and then I'll be in yet another mess. Well, 
I'll just have to risk it. Bro, I was just about to go looking for you. My Kapuna talked to me in my dreams and told me something majorly bad. His grave has been robbed and they took the book. We have to find the thief ASAP and give him what he deserves. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, of uh -oh. course. I guess uh, there must be some clue about who could have committed such an atrocity, isn't there? Yeah, sure. And I'm not surprised you're afraid. It was one of those lame soldiers. Uh, a soldier? Yeah, bro. The only thing my gramps could see was the criminal's clothing. It was green camouflage, like the color of a turtle shell. And on top of everything, they swiped the grammarium. Why are you smirking, bro? Something funny? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, well, yeah, cuz a minute ago I managed to get the grammarium back from that soldier. Amy, have you uh, seen I the prison? He was running away uh. and I was so appalled that I really smacked him up good. What pigs. Uh, cha chapters? <laughs> Amazing, bro. You are stoked with so much luck. Thank you so much. My family and I are indebted to you. We have to take the grammarium to my grandfather as soon as possible. Wait, Kai. I'm sure your grandfather would be proud if you used his grammarium one last time. You're oh, okay. Right, There's some sick poultry in need. Come on, give me the grammarium and go put Eolani in the basin. I thought I'd never see it again. Let's see if I could find the spell. Voila! Gini Papa Moa's poultry reviving spell. Ah, here we Hold go. The bird carefully and remove feathers. Take two lemons, one mango, three coconuts, and a millstone. Rise chicken. And stick them up the bird's wazoo. Firmly grip a sharp knife and dice the bird into small pieces. What? As if preparing <laughs> a chicken salad sandwich. Then bring to a slow boil until bird bursts back to life. Stay still, Birdie. <laughs> did it work? I did it. Man, Kai, unbelievable. I'm taking it straight to Loki Lani, in case it has a relapse. I'm a true kahuna. Knife's gonna freak. See you later, pal. Okay, bro. Ipili mao napo maika What's the magic spell? I was wrong about you, Kaimi. You are a deer. Well, like I said, those drunken lemurs had taken over the... Uh-huh. Uh, Seacliff, but I got the current. Brian, what would your girlfriend say? Brian. Brian <laughs> but... Close your little mouth. Let's go to my place. I want to do our makeup. Don't worry. <laughs> mm, nice hut. Weren't you in a hurry? Happy hooker. What? Okay, off with your clothes. My clothes? You don't think you'll look like a scientist in that, do you? Yeah, but why are you taking off yours? Shut up, silly. And come here. What are you gonna do? <laughs> no, I'm not sure if this is necessary. First rule of movie makeup artistry the actor's face must be completely relaxed, and you are really tense. I know how to loosen you up, though. Just a minute there. You sure seem happy. Gina's disappeared. We don't even know whether she's alive, if oh, she's a prisoner. It's the runaway wine, Brian. Hey, don't listen to that guy. You can't pass up an opportunity like this. <laughs> you had to, so you did it. Ignore him. Uh, this it is just the... doesn't seem right to me. And you hardly know that girl in there. And Come maybe the dumbest now. thing I've seen this whole game. We talk about how there are times in life when you have to know how to say. Hey, <laughs> what the heck? Kaimi, get in here. What the heck? When the times get tough, the tough get a little crazy. Stop messing around. We've got a lot of work to do. 
Oh. <laughs> Come on, sit down. I'll start by cutting your hair. No way. I I've been letting it grow for months. Look, do you want to look like the guy in the picture or not? Yeah, but... But nothing. By the way, this may be a good time for you to explain why we're doing all this, don't you think? You're right. It's the least I owe you, but get ready, because it'll take a while. My friend Gina wanted to friend. visit Mala Island, uh... so this morning we woke up early to... Perfect. My former boyfriend Zobby's clothes fit you like they were tailor-made. Do Naguki's glasses bug you? No. We seem to have the same lens prescription. Yeah, his eyesight wasn't really that bad. But since he was a physics student and a boring, shy bookworm, they looked right on him. Uh, yeah. I know some guys <laughs> like that. Well, then. Wait a sec. That suitcase there used to belong to Hune, my Korean ex. I threw some clothes in, just in case they examine your personal belongings when you enter the camp. Now you're just perfect. Oh, are you leaving already? Yeah, I have no time to waste. Goodbye, and thank you for, uh, everything. <laughs> Thanks to you, Kaimi. Wow. By the way, I don't, don't forget to tell Joshua to wait for me at Alawala Cove. And remember... When the real pinon gets here. Don't worry. I'll know what to do. Yes. See you soon. No. I don't even. Bonjour. My name is Pierre Pignon. Yes, sir. But not that I don't trust you, sir. But you can never be careful enough. But of course, Sojo. Oh, he's French, Amy. Correct. Welcome, Professor. Marine Zachariah O'Connor, at your orders. I'm completely at your service, Professor. Is everything in order? Alors... So, I finally managed to infiltrate the military camp. In other words, the girl did a nice job on you. How do you know that? I mean, what job are you referring to? Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, I think you missed it. The makeup, silly. What else could I mean? Phew. Well, anyway, this Lokelani took the cosmetics and some clothes to the bar, did my makeup real fast, and then afterwards I changed behind some bushes and... Okay, okay. I can tell there's something you don't want to tell me. Just explain what happened when you sneaked into the camp, will you? Well, first... Right. It's a miracle I'm alive, Sushi. The whole thing made a 180 degree turn, and nothing had prepared me for what was waiting inside. What I did figure out fast was that they were desperately awaiting Pignon's arrival. No sooner did I set down the suitcase in my tent then O'Connor told me the colonel was requesting to meet with him immediately. I tried not to get nervous. If Kortzmeyer recognized me, my fate could be sealed. And when I got to his tent... Chapter 3. Before anybody asks, I have, nobody, I have no idea how many chapters there are. You look so different, Professor. I didn't remember you being so young. Ah, uh, you know, we French have the magnifique skin cream. Oh, you Europeans. Fancy a cigar? Havana's finest. Sent straight from Guantanamo by my old pal, Colonel Chesson. Uh, merci, but I uh, do not smoke. All the better for me, because I ain't got much tobacco left. My last shipment got dropped by parachute, but the wind blew it off course, and my men can't find it. All right, we'll be sure to remember that later. Un peu less, Monsieur le Colonel. I'm twice your age, Professor, so save your advice for the younger whippersnappers. Flower pot? Yes, my colonel? Tell Chapman everything's ready. Send him in. Professor, I'm going to put my cards on the table. They say you're the best contractor around since Simon retired. And if I remember right, you were his right-hand man in Operation Platypus Dream. Platypus Dream? No, I remember. That was so funny. A jolly good old time you had, huh? Ha! 
Who could have known there'd be a rock slide right during the exchange? If they hadn't whipped out that amazing weapon, Simon already christened it as... What was it again? Ah, we. Oui. I began to remember. Truly magnifique. The NG Zero. Hit Metal Gear. Those rocks instantaneously. That's what I call a weapon of mass destruction. Damn, we need one of those. Well, uh, I do not know if I have one, chez moi. Don't be silly, Professor. You're looking a bit too relaxed. I don't want you getting comfy. Like I said, I need you to activate the amoeba. And yes, I know Simon is the only man to achieve that from our side. But the old guy is MIA. In summation, we lost all contact with our guests. Which makes us believe there have been technical difficulties. I don't want to spook you, but if we don't activate the amoeba soon, we could lose them forever. I assume you understand how serious this matter is. Sacré bleu, I imagine something like this. Uh huh. I can't quite figure out your accent, Professor. Louisiana. Why? But I am French, Monsieur. Oh yeah, France. Great generals, the French. Julius Caesar, Napoleon, Don Quixote. <laughs> Chapman, it's about time. Sir. Professor Pignon, this is Lieutenant Colonel Chapman, my second in command. He'll take you to your workspace and give you the procedural briefcase. You'll start working immediately, and I'll let you do so by yourself, as your damn agency's rules ordain. However, I'll be watching your progress up close, and I what hope you What do you mean Napoleon was in French? Soon. Open the amoeba. That's not what I learned from the council. Will go just fine. We gotta open the amoeba. Metal gear. This way, Professor. <clears throat> Careful with the stairs. Please don't fall behind, Professor. And this looks like a series of puzzles. Okay, Professor, here you are. Ooh la la, c'est magnifique. This was the first room the archaeologists excavated. The public only had access to the Tiki Temple room, and they made this room into their center of operations. It's shameful the way we evacuated them out of there, and with no prior warning or reasonable explanations. We used to act with decency and honor. Ah, uh, we oui, I remember. With a major decency. I'll leave the procedural briefcase here for you. Inside the computer on that desk is all the information gathered about the amoeba by Simon in the past few years, before his sudden departure. Anyway, I know you're aware Sudden of this, departure. but let me insist about the catalyzing glove. As you know, the original was accidentally broken during the dream of the hippocampus, and the budget to mm. make this replica was more than all the lunar missions combined. So don't forget, protect that glove with your life. Do not worry, Monsieur Chapman. Merci for reminding me. Don't thank me. As you know, I merely obey orders I disapprove of. Well, Professor, I'll let you work. God mm. help you. Au revoir. Actually, the good news is I don't remember any of this. <laughs> like, even in the slightest. Bizarre besoins, a Chapman. He sold his own, and has so many catalyzing gloves. Plus, he seem a bit paranoid, like he seen Godsmire. Hey, why do I keep using that French accent if nobody's around? Anyway, Godsmire's <laughs> got another thing coming to him if he thinks I'm gonna sit here and open up amoebas. As if I had time for games. The important thing is I'm here, and now I'm free to roam around the camp, find out where they're holding Gina, and escape on Knife's motorboat full speed ahead. Watch out, army. Here I come. 
I thought we had an understanding, Professor. When you open up the amoeba, you will be free to do as you wish. But in the meantime, your place is here, in this room. Oh, man. The thing is, I take the 15 daiquiris in the boat, and since there's no lavatory, I have the need of doing le pipi. Give it up, Professor. Even though I can see you perfectly, I can't hear you. Ah, uh, no? And if I want to the one to punch on the face? I repeat, I cannot hear you. So please shut your mouth and get down to work. Well, I guess this means he can't hear me. See what I can cook up to get out of here now. And fast, because Pignon might arrive at any moment. I hope Lokelani can keep him stalled at the beach. Hey, uh, Lokelani? How long do you say it take to pick me up? I hope long enough for me to get to know you, Professor. May I call you Pierrot? Yes, uh, but uh, maybe I'd better head for the camp on my own, no? You could wait in my hut and change out of those sweaty clothes. How's this game? Uh... <laughs> but, uh, oh, I'm in a bit of an hurry, and I... Uh... Silence. Uh... <laughs> oui, madame. I have confidence in her uh, abilities. So, let's get down to work. Well, glad you asked. Amy earlier said that the, the they're starting to miss Toonstruck. That says anything. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, uh, rummage through my stuff. I'm supposed to do something with it, but I have no idea what. Hmm. There are just bottles of paint and a box full of plastic bags. The bottles are of no interest to me, but I'll take a bag. They look strong. Four ply is my guess. Ah, yes, four ply it's plastic made of bags. Ply plastic and zips, hermetically shut. They're full of packaging material, but at the bottom I can see something else. A socket cam. Ah. Record straight onto an 80 megabyte hard drive has 18 megabytes 80 megabytes. Image quality, 12 times optical zoom, and allows for montage and editing in the camera itself. Holy A cow. Modern wonder. Modern wonder. I don't see what good it would do me. <laughs> I'm sure it gets better. I like I said, I don't remember any of this part at all. <laughs> I remember having positive uh, feelings towards this game after I finished it, but I don't. I that was I don't even remember when that was, like 2012 or something. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, let's see. Let's climb. Let's climb. Want to go? This pixel it's here. It's falling apart and has a roll of duct tape on top of it. Sure, I'll take it. Luckily, it's far cleaner than the doormat. Where are you, Professor? Don't make me play hide and seek. 
If he comes in, the jig is up for me. So... Heck. Better get back down. Darn. Darn. Let's see. This is a bit complicated, but since the socket cam is equipped for loop mode playback, I could record myself sitting at the computer for a while, make a loop containing that footage, and play it for hours by disconnecting the cable coming out of the surveillance camera and plugging it into the socket cam. The I image did genius. The see is almost the same one he's getting now, so he'd never notice the difference. In the meantime, I could search for Gina as long as I want. But now that I think of it, there's one tiny problem. The socket cam could fall down while the surveillance camera is moving, and my plan would end up thrown for a loop. Hey, wait a minute. That roll of duct tape might be just what I need. I'll have to choose just the right moment so that Quartzmeyer doesn't notice anything. Here we go. Got about that, Claude. <laughs> I'll put the camera in place using the tape and start my performance. And now quickly to the computer. I think this five minute recording should do the trick. Now I just have to put it in loop mode so that the recording plays for hours and then plug the surveillance camera wire into the socket cam. And make sure it has infinite battery. Done. If everything goes right, I'll be able to escape from this room without any flack from Quartzmeyer. Right. Well, if Quartzmeyer stays quiet, that means my little trick worked. Quartzmeyer isn't saying anything, so I guess I passed the test. Mm. Hey, what is that? Could that be the amoeba Quartzmeyer's so uptight about opening? Must be something mighty special, because it's protected under a cube of glass like a museum piece. A ball with three <laughs> holes in it. A bowling ball? I don't see what interest the army could have in a primitive bowling alley, even if it's the archaeological find of the millennium. The cube seems solid, and though it looks like glass, it's hot. In some way, this all reminds me of a petrified mosquito in a piece of amber I used to carry around as a good luck charm. Umpteen hundred year old bowling ball, just like in that documentary. Oh, wait, I think that nice was cube. actually the Flintstones. Documentary, <laughs> the Flintstones. I'm sure of one thing it's not a people. It's too narrow. My pinky wouldn't even fit. Well, if Quartzmeyer stays quiet, that means my little trick worked. Hey, 18! Wait, I hear some voices over there. 
Why can't we choose our own numbers? Impossible. That don't work, 13. Tarantula let us do that once for fun, and she ended up with 30 guys fighting to be number one. You got number 13 fair and square, and 13 you'll keep. What about Mr. 11? Don't that sound cool? Forget it. You could only use a number that isn't busy, and there's already a Mr. 11. I can't stand the superstitious. Wait, it ain't superstition, but... Well... Wrong with 13. Excuse me, my lady. We'll shut up now. What a weird conversation. If it isn't a football team, then who were those guys? I think there's someone there. Sure, let's take a peek. Ugh, nice stairwell. I wonder where it leads. There's a couple guys up there. What about 88? Oh, it sounds so forceful and... Shh. Who goes there? Bonjour, messieurs. It is moi, the professor. I can't stand professors. Exactly. Whoever you are, where do you think you're going? I was just uh, stretching a bit the legs on the... Listen up. You go up one more step and you won't have any legs. Wow. I will be leaving. <laughs> hey. We really spooked him, huh? Mm-hmm. Damn, soldiers. That black uniform strikes me as odd, too. It doesn't look anything like the ones I've seen before. I don't know. Maybe they aren't soldiers, but they're sure watching that entrance like hawks. So there must be something interesting inside. There's probably a crushed soldier against the door, but I'll give it a go. Well, if it isn't O'Connor, great. That'll make things easier for me. No, Caddy, the audition. Don't you remember that application form I sent in? And that's not all. I climbed a palm tree, too. Several times. <laughs> no well, way. more than once, man. That's what several means, doesn't it? S-E-V-V-R-U-L. <laughs> no, no, no. Several, which means two or more. No, that's not it, Caddy. The Congratulations, thing Chaos. Like to read. If you followed my cue, you might get a tryout yourself. Well, sure, Monsieur O'Connor. Gotta go, man. Duty is calling. Call me later on Channel 5. Professor, you're gonna get me in big trouble. The Colonel has told me I'm absolutely not to let you out of here. Tranquil. Right now, Monsieur Kotzmauer is seeing my hard work in the control room. You got me on that one, sir. I don't even want an explanation. I've had quite a mixed up day today, sir. Pardon? Why have you called me Monsieur? Shoot, sir. Sometimes I mix people up, sir. You'll get to know me better and see, sir. Hey, Professor. It's the same. Call me Monsieur if you wish. Whatever you order, Professor, sir. Mm-hmm. With who were you speaking on the walkie? With Private Cadwallader, sir. He's an utter fool, but he's my best buddy. And I'm teaching him to add up numbers. It ain't easy for him, because his fingers are all twisty, and he can't stretch them out right. What do you know about this place? The same thing I know about almost everything, Professor, sir. A bit more than nothing. Have you ever heard of CIA-2? No, sir. I had no idea they'd open branch offices, but I think it would be a grand workplace for a nice soldier slash lumberjack who you and me both know. Mm. So tell me about those ruins and that temple inside. No soldier in the regiment is authorized to go in there, sir. I was only there the day we arrived to throw out the archers and put up a big steel outpost. Archers? Archers? Yeah, but they'd left, sir. The ones who were there were those... Those guys in white robes who were looking around for broken things in old places. Archaeologists? Dang, sir. I just sounded like a complete idiot. <laughs> Do you know what the amoeba is? No, sir. But I'm sure it's not that complicated. My grade school teacher always said, Zachariah O'Connor, you are simpler than an amoeba. Hmm, good hint. You haven't heard of the Operation Platypus Dream, have you? 
Not a thing, sir. And I'll be a furry duck if I know what a platypus is used for. If you don't know anything, I probably shouldn't ask. My teacher used to say that too, sir. Dang, I messed up already. What do you use that big head for, O'Connor? Well, it makes the rest of me more attractive, wouldn't you say? We speak after, O'Connor. Sir, yes, sir! I was supposed to deliver a message to you when you came out of the temple, but I forgot. And why you not give it to me now? Sir, you are devilishly sly. You seem to figure out everything, don't you? For Professor Pierre Pignon. How did you get this? The boys over at Highway Patrol warned me a while back. The waitress at the beach told him to give it to O'Connor and nobody but. Merci, O'Connor. After, I'll return and we shut for a while. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Professor, sir. Why, hello? We got orders to intercept you and take you to the Colonel if you exit the temple, sir. But you have no donsies. Because where we're at, nobody can see us, sir. But if you walk just a ways from the temple and get into the guard's line of vision, you're in for a nice thrashing. Très bien, O'Connor. Merci for the warning. Sir, you're welcome, sir. A nice guy. Very helpful. Always looking out for his friends. Gave me a letter. I think there's something inside. I'll just open it up. Hmm. A ring. Wait, there's a letter too. Dear Kaimi, the strange object I'm sending you belongs to the real Pignon. I noticed he refused to be separated from it for a single moment, so I assumed it was something important. I know where I recognize this He's girl's voice right from. Now, but when he wakes up, he'll want to go toward the camp, so hurry up. Your friend always, Lokelani. The girl from, uh... A real night. This girl's amazing. I'd give anything to know how she's keeping Pinyon there. Probably playing like checkers. Oh god. Hello, my dear. Ooh, I can only imagine. Though knowing Lokelani, she probably just started talking about her ex-boyfriend. And he fell asleep out of sheer boredom. Mm-hmm. It was inside of the envelope Loki Lani sent me. Yeah. The triangle on the ring matches the one on the handle. Let's see. Man, what is this? What a neato briefcase. I'd Edo. have to be low on street smarts not to ransack this baby. A pair of sunglasses, the card that was just activated, a glove made of, I'm not sure, it's like glass, but it's soft at the same time. No doubt about it. That must be the highly valuable catalyzing glove Chapman told me about. And hold your horses, man. This has got to be a neuralizer. I saw one in a movie and they used it to change people's memories. I heard they actually existed, but they never sold any at the mall. Well, that seems to be everything. Mm-hmm. I just realized the background is the spooky girl with tarantulas all over her. <laughs> Can't wait to meet her. How do we get out of the inventory?
<laughs> Yukiko. Monsieur Connell. Gotta go, man. Duty is calling. Call me later on Channel 5. At your orders, Professor. Sir! You haven't shown anyone the envelope you gave me, right? Sir, no, sir. The girl said to give it to you and you alone, and that's what I did. With who were you speaking on the walkie? With Private Cadwallader, sir. He's an utter fool, but he's my best buddy. And I'm teaching him to add up numbers. It ain't easy for him, because his finger... Uh-huh. What do you... The same thing I know about... Have you ever... No, sir. I have... But I think... So... No soldier... I was only... Out chair? Yeah, but the one... Those... Okay. Dang, sir. No, my great. You have not Not a. And I'll be. My teacher, you damn. What do you. Well, did. Yeah. You know, I'd like to ask you something, if it isn't too much. How's the audition going, sir? Of what are you speaking about? Dang it, sir. The audition you're doing on me right now. If I pass, I swear I'll be a brave, hardworking soldier. Just like I put on the application form for the intelligence service. And me. What do I have to do with all these? There's no need to pretend, sir. At first, I was a smidge confused. But then I realized you're not Pignon. You're the policeman disguised as a civilian who interrogated me at the beach. And when I saw your intelligence colleague with that envelope, I said, Zachariah, that officer has come here to scout out your talent. So don't mess up the audition. You talking to me about the CIA was the humdinger, sir. Mm. So how is it that you, of all people, recognized me? I can't figure it out either, sir. Do I get extra credit for that? Man, this is unbelievable. I need to rest. See you around, O'Connor. At your orders, sir. <laughs> he knows. If only I had some it's way a to total wild card. Wipe his memory. I don't quite get that story he's cooked up in his head about the audition. But he could obviously blow my cover at any moment. Colonel Cordsfire, that agent disguised as Pignon said blah blah blah. I better do something about this, or it could be my neck. Hmm. Only had some way to neuralize him. Yeah, hey, this contraption will erase O'Connor's memory, and I can make him believe I am the actual Pignon. Better put on the sunglasses to make sure the blast doesn't neuralize me, too. Soldier yeah, O'Connor, stare at this object, please. Gotta go, man. Duty is calling. Call me later on Channel 5. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Listen carefully. This is not a test, and I am not an MP. My name is Professor Pierre Pignon, and any memory you have to the contrary will now vanish forever. Oh, and from now on, you'll read no more weapons manuals, just Barbara Cartland romance novels. Whoa, sir, careful. Marble's falling at 6.30, sir. Now, that was unexpected. Anyway, is it clear who I am or not? Sir, yes, sir. But I'm not sure if I passed the test. Oh, man, it didn't work. Dang it, sir. I thought I was up to muster. Now what do I do with you, O'Connor? I'm all out of ideas. Do what you will, sir. I shall accept my punishment with honor and valor, sir. Wait a minute. Soldier, I'll give you one more chance to pass. Your task is to keep your mouth closed tight and not to tell my true occupation to anyone, not even Kordsmeyer himself. Sir, thank you, sir. On my honor as a Marine, I will not let you down. I better not let me down. Just my luck. For once, I get to use a neuralizer and it turns out to be a worthless model. I guess these uh, marbles are what make the neuralizer work. Hmm. Definitely not planets. Definitely marbles.
like an ATM machine? Well, the ATM machine. Matches. And saw it here. Things I have seen. Did I just see that? Or am I imagining things? Hmm. Yep. The cube vanished. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do what? The ball is there, but where are the bowling pins? Just recklessly brandish the amoeba and see what God's plan for me is. All right. <sighs> No, impossible. Either it's stuck to the ground or it weighs several metric tons. Doesn't seem too logical, but three holes, three marbles, what the heck? Let's go. What? Holy mackerel! Amazing! It's just floating there in midair. Ah. Uh. Within the range of outrageousness here, this seems like the most logical thing to do. Plus, I'd say the lines on the glove match up nicely with the grooves on the ball. What the heck? It's as if two things had formed. Uh, I don't know how to describe them. This sounds crazy, but they look like twin black holes. Let's see. Wow, we invented portals. Man. If I stick my arm through one hole, it shows up three feet away in the other. Either I've been drugged or this is candid camera. Anything's possible. Whatever this is, it almost scared the catalyzing glove right off my hand. And it looks so fragile, it probably would have shattered to pieces. Hmm. I'll just leave this here. Hey, what happened? How could that be? The glass cube came back again. This island is outrageous. <laughs> Chapman said it contained Simon's research on the amoeba. Maybe it's the same Professor Simon that Joshua kept mentioning. Pass. Move on to the next player. Though on second thought, the notes may give me hints on improving the performance of that floating space warp ball over there. Each of these docks is longer than the Baroque trilogy. Ah. So I'll have to tap into my speed reading skills. That took a while, but I've got it. I just whipped up a little schematic chart here. And if I've grasped the concept, I've been going down the right path up to now. The marbles, the glove, the appearance of the black holes, uh, well, vortices, according to Simon. But what I have yet to do is even more unbelievable. When the points appear, I have to concentrate on a specific location in space so that point B will travel to it. Then you're supposed to enter point A, and you appear wherever you sent point B. Sounds like your average beat me up gizmo, as seen on millions of sci-fi shows. I was thinking portal. I'd have to be berserk to try it, but the way my day's going, I feel like I fit the description. Hmm. Damn, that lame cube again. All right, what do you where do you think we're going to go? Who do we want to talk to? Our new space powers. They'll let us go Let's anywhere. See if the same thing happens again. Hey, I knew that once I figured out that trick, life would be simpler.
I was thinking we go see Gina. Think about where Gina is. According to Simon's notes, I should concentrate on some point in space to make point B travel there. Now, what place should I think about? Planet Trantor. Dude, Pluto's doghouse? Campsite where Gina is. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Nope. No way. Wow. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to check whether the motorboat is still there and make sure Joshua isn't up to any shenanigans. Well, at least not up to anything that's highly damaging. Neato! I can feel something. I think it's working. Hey! Point B disappeared. Well, I'll cross my fingers and hope I don't get beamed into a sewer. Come on! Hurry up and finish! Isn't it my turn yet? <laughs> Ooh, that must be it. Hello. What's happening? Joshua! Why? Someone is attempting to communicate with me via telepathic ways! I can sense you, wherever you are, oh unknown being! I'm over here! Look back for a second! No! I'd lose my concentration! And then the telepathic connection would go on the fritz! I dang it, Joshua! What planet, nebula, or cosmic dust bunny do you speak to me, oh being? Oh no, here we go again. It's me, Brian. Brian? Since when are you into telepathizing? Actually, I don't know. And if you look back... I thought I noticed something in you. You're not bad for a novice, but your signal is weak. There's a lot of static, as if someone were wringing your neck. Whatever you say, but please, do me a favor and don't move. Because I'll be back for you at any moment. And we'll zoom out of here on the motorboat. Oh, and one more thing. Uh. Do you know what an amoeba is? Hey, that's what the Trantorians used to pull me out of the ship on the sly. Alpha told me that's the name the Earthling contactors used to call the Trantorian jalopy that drives around space. The initials come from anti-cellular matter, e-nuclear bilocator apparatus. Oh, I don't really get the apparatus part. It's more like being beamed up, but cool and without getting mosquitoes in your teeth. The bad thing is you can only go to places where there's tretonite, an ultra-powerful material found only in energy stones and Trantorian belts. The trick lies in putting all your body cells in a single bio line so that they can jettison through space really fast. And then they get put back in order, right where they were. Boggles the mind, huh? Anyway, its inventor, a shifty but intelligent little alien, based his ideas on enucleation theory and the anticellular petochius, the monoglot of which, on the shimmy scale, is... Amazing, but true. If I'm not wigging, I think I've got the ideal escape plan for when I find Gina. God, I couldn't take one more second of Joshua's nonsense. But I doubt he'll take my sudden departure the wrong way. He'll just think the telepathic network blew a fuse. Uh-huh. I bet you guys thought we would never see that guy again. Good old Joshua. And that he wouldn't be a key plot point. As far as I've ascertained, this won't... This doesn't seem... Yeah. Hey, 
it worked before, but I hope I can do it again. Futuristic, but it's present day. Joshua, what's going on here? Brian, I can't telepathize at this exact moment. I'm operating on a boy. Boy? A little demon is a lemur. A lemur? I knew such a smart guy could never be human. Well, it turns out the paddle slipped out of the other guy's hands, flew off, and got stuck in this poor thing's teeth. It was a tragic scene. But luckily, I was on hand. This kid brought me a couple of packages filled with molar repair gadgets. So here I am trying to remove the paddle. Oh, you're familiar with dentistry? Not a thing. But we geniuses <laughs> take advantage uh -oh. of our inquiring minds. Listen, you go out in the neighborhood and play. And let us fools get down to work. He needs to be banned from entering any wildlife preserves. Mm-hmm. some sort of motor underneath probably to raise it up it's operated using the controls to the right it's operate it's up who's right I'm not gonna get far the machinery isn't turned on They're surely used to lift up the platform. The machinery's turned off, and I see no sign of a key. I like that we get to do this every single time. Let's hope Joshua has completed that advanced paddle removal on Little Demon. And it may sound gross, but it saved my life when the toilet was busy because I placed my derriere through the amoeba and into the next toilet over. Unless... Joshua. Jeez, ah, don't rush me. I'm finishing already. So anyway... Alpha says that... Wait, just answer one question. Okay! Ah, what a pain in the neck! If we're communicating by telepathy, why are you talking out loud? So you realize, eh? It's a level 15 telepathic technique, really. But don't worry, forget about it. I teach you, but I don't think you'd even understand level 2. <laughs> sure. How did Little Demon's operation go? Joshua never messes up, Brian. The paddle removal was a major success. Actually, I hardly even used the molar repair instruments. But I implemented the five-stage botch-up technique and pulled in his silver cord before it snapped. Mm. Did you lend me the dental instruments you used on Little Demon? I would, but you know how weak my telepathy is when I try to work with material objects. I could never do it. 
but you're a genius. I bet if you concentrate hard enough and throw the instrument straight up, you'll break the time-space continuum barrier and I'll catch him. I see you're getting to know me. Well, I've tried to make you happy. Which do you want? The probes or the removers? Uh, probes? Okay, catch. Here they come. Shoot the glove! Chapman even warned me. I find an amazing way out of this camp and my invention gets messed up before I can even use it. Oh no. At least I got my hands on these dental torture tools, which I plan to take full advantage of. Without a glove, there's no way to open the amoeba. So, I'm basically shafted. Well, the truth is, the points are still there. And they won't disappear till I leave this room. I could escape this minute. But I can't leave without Gina. Ah, oh, forget it. Maybe I can find some other way out. Mmm. Bye. I'd have to find the key to the... The machinery's turned off, and I see no sign of a key. Why not? Since I have no key, I can see how my lockpicking skills are coming along. Bingo. Easy every time. Going up. It looks like it's not going up any further. I see. It seems to be hollow inside. Doesn't seem too hard considering the increase in my skill set throughout this adventure. I've gained many levels and increased my skill set quite a bit. Huh. Seems like the archaeologist's budget ran out for lighting in here. Or maybe they just installed the motorized platform right before the soldiers got here. And they didn't even have time to take a trip up here. Hey look, it's Humpty Dumpty, the talking egg from Alice in Wonderland. Oh no, it's just another boring old skeleton crushed by a rock. The way he looks with all that dust, he must have gotten here 50 years ago. A hat? Hey. A whip? Well, one thing's obvious. Poor Stiff was not a very good archaeologist. <laughs> wonder what this is a reference to. I'm glad this guide literally tells me it's an Indiana Jones reference. I would never know. Okay, uh, large ball. It must have rolled through the gallery and flattened the poor guy like a postage stamp. I don't think I'll ever wear it, but why not? Ah! Hold a tarantula as big as a cow! Lucky it didn't move. A tarantula big as a cow in there. Couldn't I look at something more pleasant? The strap is caught under that big ball. Don't know if I could get it out of there, but it's such an antique, it's probably useless anyway. What I will do is search inside to find something special. Hmm, bottle full of dust. Let's read the pretty label. Stench is all, because everybody hates snakes. 
Sounds like a home consumer club special. Let's mm. read on. Genuine miraculous stenchazole with a formula based on the age-old recipe created by legendary Dr. Jimmy Snake Slayer Canyon. The enhanced formula <laughs> contains 13% more anhydric sulfur and sulfuric acid, potent noxious odor stabilizers. Therefore, the pestilence from just one bottle of genuine stenchazole keeps your home free of reptile invaders for weeks on end. Purchase now to obtain the vermin repellent recommended by the Royal Agglomeration of Adventure Seekers and the Kensington Shure Homemakers Union. Not available in shops. Warning. Once open, do not breathe at a distance of under 100 feet. Extremely malodorous vapors may cause irreversible damage to some user's olfactory glands. Hmm. <laughs> Me neither. It's actually in quite good shape. Hope it's luckier to me than it was to him. All right, I have a whip. I can't wait for one of those huge rolling balls to appear and smash me up against my hat-wearing friend. I'll have to take it slow. It's pitch black in here. There seems to be a little light over there. Well, only an optimist would be excited about this much light, so I guess I'll pretend I am one. Tarantula! I hear voices. Did you come for John Doe's clothing? No, I'll send someone later to take it to the lab. Right now, the scientists are too busy with the trantonites he brought us. Have those dumb items he ordered been delivered? A while ago. As soon as they were taken to him, he put on the soccer uniform, drank two cans of onion soup, and lay down to watch a TV movie. It was quite a disgusting scene. What about Pignon? I didn't want him to see me. He thinks I'm watching him like a hawk through the surveillance camera. It's better this way. I need results, and I don't want him losing focus for a second. Something doesn't add up, Nathan. If what you want is NG-0, why didn't you make dough bring it, instead of those rocks? Trantonites, doll. I wanted our contact to be someone else. But Doe is really just the chef, and it would have created suspicion if he droned around the NG-0. That's why I thought of the Trant Knights. Simon said they weren't controlled by any security systems. Some poppycock about how Trantor, its inhabitants, and Trantonite are all the same being. Their existence, therefore, depends on those rock things, which none of them would even think of damaging. Except for Doe, right? These 40 years in the service have taught me the world's full of embittered sourpusses, and it ain't hard to turn them into traitors. Finding dough was just a matter of time, just like now. Mm. There's as a glove on the floor. We'll go in through the NG Zero. Without their trantonite, they'll be so weak we can mow them down. And then. Then what? You'll do as with dough. You'd betray your own people and act behind the president's back. Negative. I'll protect him from himself. I'll clean things up and get rid of the sissies who are using him. Would be hamburger devouring civilians who don't have the hamburgers to grab a machete and cut the bull's head off. What the heck? This country was founded by generals, by soldiers. Calm down, little soldier. I'm with you. As long as you keep paying me what we agreed, that is. Tarantula, I've got some news. We think that spy is around here in the camp. The signal ain't clear, but we're trying to zero in on him. Damn that two bit civilian. Mobilize everyone. Let no one sleep until we catch him. Ha! He's walked into the wolf's den. No doubt about it. He's in cahoots with that parachute girl. Gina! Parachute Don't girl. repeat the same mistake as this morning. She jumped out over the lake. She had to be eliminated. Oh, no. She should have been captured and interrogated. Well, you can just forget about her. The underwater camera recorded footage of the girl sinking to the lake bottom. She is not talking to anyone anymore. There were tunnels no, under the can't island. Be. Gina can't be. She's dead. making out with turtles. 
Oh no, she's dead again. <laughs> Run away. Do it on your own. No way. My experience tells me she <laughs> isn't so easy to get rid of. Never give she up, Brian. Got shot by some mafia thugs and managed to escape. And I myself ran over her with my car on accident. And once again, she escaped the grips of death. She even fell into a really deep well. And she hardly scraped her leg. And now... Wait a minute. Maybe I'm wishing on a star here, but Joshua says that the alien spacecraft is at the bottom of the lake. And considering the way things stand, maybe what he said is true. It seems nuts, but I think my only way out is to help him find Professor Simon. Gina doesn't deserve for me to give up. I'll have to act carefully, however. If I heard things right, they think I'm a spy and they're hot on my trail. And don't mess up again, doll. Don't be afraid of him, my little pretties. The day I grow tired of him, <laughs> you'll see. Oh, you're all so lovely. Angelina, Agostina, Andrina, <laughs> Agrippina. Every bit of this is Metal Gear Solid. Cena and Adelina. You, where is Adelina? Uh, I don't know anyone named Adelina. Amateurs, I stop for one second to speak with a colonel and you lose a 20 inch long tarantula. <sighs> Poor Adelina. It was 13's fault. Hey, I didn't do nothing wrong. 18 did it. Liar. It was 17. Uh-uh. It was you, for instance. Oh, no. She was sucked dry. She hardly even scratched the dude. I could see it coming. I told you those finely manicured nails contain a paralyzing venom underneath. What? You copy? Forget about that food for my pretties. I just came across 180 pounds of feed, but it's too fresh for their weak stomachs. You know what to do. Hey, I thought spiders ate insects. Normally they do, but these have been raised on decomposed flesh. The worse it smells, the better. Silence, or you will be accompanying 17. That's the girl I almost ran into the first time I came Please into the camp. Who'd have guessed she's a grade A psychopath? I better hurry up and I'll escape through the amoeba. Or I may not live to tell this whole story. This must be the Tiki Temple everyone keeps mentioning, though. What I don't get is what the heck that huge metal arena is for. With that circular structure and the size, it almost looks like a coliseum. And it's surrounded by men in black like the ones from before. So something important must be hidden inside. Hmm. Probably that John Doe. I wonder who that guy is. This is all so weird. Mm -hmm. Agrippina, behave. Stop biting Augustina. But hey, you sure 77 wouldn't look better on me? Negative. It'll never pass. You're famished, aren't you? Alexandrina, hello. It looks like it has clothes in it. A uniform, perhaps? Not very discreet, by the way. This may just be a coincidence, but the palms of those gloves remind me of the palms of those catalyzing gloves I wrecked. Excellent. They're watching it too closely for it to be something unimportant. So it couldn't be anything less than the mess hall. Quite impressive. And thank goodness it doesn't have the mean old face most Tiki's have. Excellent. None of them really look like soldiers. Silence, or you will be accompanying 17. <laughs> that wasn't me. He's dressed in black, like the ones that wouldn't let me into the temple. I'll see you later, one. I think I've counted another five just like him watching the temple and the Colosseum. I bet a tangled web is being woven inside there. They say tarantula venom isn't deadly, but why put that theory to the test? Plus, I bet these have been genetically engineered to become more lethal. This may just be a coincidence, oh, but the palms of those gloves <laughs> remind me of the palms of those catalyzing gloves I wrecked. Any further news about the spy? I'll see you later, one. How do I get out? Alexandrina, hello, my lovely. 
since we're all wearing uniforms and goggles, I can fool a tarantula if I tell her I'm 37, can't I? Impossible. A lack of experience can be... There we go. All right, now to capture the spider. Put it inside this ultra-strong plastic bag. This bag is so strong, I'd be surprised if the tarantula could gnaw its way out. Well, if I do this right, it won't even come in contact with my fingers. Let's hope she's still asleep. Got her. Those holes I made <laughs> with the probe should keep Adelina from suffocating. Got it. Have you finished, number one? Yes, Tarantula. I'll take the bits and pieces up to the roof. With all this sun, they should be ready in just a few days. Remember, it has to smell truly vile in order for my pretties to devour it like gluttons. They're just particular that way. And remember, once you find that spy, get everyone looking for Adelina. Yes, ma'am. Tarantula. Did you hear that, my pretties? You'll soon get a waft of that pungent odor that drives you mad. And then you'll have a true feast. You'll just have to be patient a little bit longer. Hmm. We give her back her spider. They can concentrate looking for me. I give her the me. time of day, let alone such a nice Banished, gift. What? Aren't you? Of course. The spider will run out, tarantula will follow it, and I can go grab the glove. Wait, what am I saying? How could I be sure the spider won't make a beeline for the terrarium? Darn, I'd better forget it. Hmm. Good thing I have another plan. All right. No. Silence. Are you... Uh, all right, new plan. Let's hope the old rule that everything that goes up must come down works as always. Ah, uh, yes, long drawn out scenes of us Going up and down this thing. <laughs> All right. Cool, but it's funny. Did you know you're the 13th guy to be called 13? And, uh, what happened to the other 12? That won't do any good. Yeah, you saw what happened to 17. Oh, God, I have to ask Tarantula to switch it for me. Typical. That's what the other 12 did. Okay, forget I said anything. Great idea. If I put the bottle in the right spot, I can get that aromatic rotten beef smell that dripped over to the Tiki Temple. Ooh, ooh, imagine this. 13, the Tiki just. I won't be fingers. able to get beyond this point <laughs> Good idea, Claude. Top. Okay, I'll open the bottle and hide it inside this crack. Crap. Absurd. 
You're not saving your country, you're just a mercenary paid by a murderess. This bottle's so old, I can twist it open. I'll have to put the creative juices to work. So old, I can twist it open. Better to use the robes. Yeah, that one on the right will help me get some leverage to twist off the lid. Oh man, disgusting. For once, an advertising slogan that doesn't lie. This could raise the dead. If I hadn't closed the lid right away, it would have knocked me out. So now that I managed to open that thing, it's time to put my plan to the test. All right, good plan. Elephants sitting in a tree. K I S S. Oh, shut up. We're working. <laughs> what? Perfect. Nobody saw me. Hey, what's that stench? Ugh, it's revolting. Yeah. If you even hint it was me, I'll pound you on the head. Hilarious. The smell made it all the way to the temple. It's working. All right. I'm up there. I'd have to marinate myself in a vat of um, sulfur spray for 24 hours first. Oh, nice. Alexandrina, hello, my lovely. All right, here we go. Sure, that plan should work, and Adelina will run in the right direction. Even I can smell where that icky stench is all emanating from. Let's just cross our fingers and hope everything works out. Come on, Adelina, use that keen sense of smell and head for that aromatic delight. Hey, a spider! Adelina! Stop her! Yikes! She crawled into that hole! Move out of my way, you amateurs! Now's the time. I better hurry if I don't want those goons to catch me down there. Adelina, my lovely... Take all the gloves. No, take all the gloves. One for each hand. The right glove is the one I want. Good. Now, wait, I heard something. It's Quartzmeyer. Drangela, is Pignon here? No. What's got your gun all cocked, soldier boy? You're not jealous of a scientist. Pipe down. It was that damn spy disguised as Pignon. He messed up the security camera and escaped. What spy? I thought his face looked familiar. Of course. Now it makes sense. A while back, my men told me that the spy was here inside the ruins, according to the signal. I couldn't imagine such a system breach, so I told him to fix the locator system. So, if he's not in here, he must be in the other room. Come on, doll. Let's go swat him. Damn, they caught me. Hey, wait. My twin. <laughs> Gosh, finally, I get a piece of the action. Uh, talk about bad luck. Right when I get the glove to escape, they find me out. If only I knew what that locator was made of and how they managed to find me. Anyway, I have to get my neck out of here before it's run. Yeah, not a bad idea. Maybe I can overhear the info I need to escape. I've got to hurry and keep those men in black from seeing me. I think that wheel-like thing next to the antenna is used to change the channel. Unless it's a walkie canteen, which I've also seen on the market. Mm. 
My men have combed the room, and he's nowhere to be found. He must be hiding. Then we'll stand guard until he comes to the surface. Did you hear me, you infiltrator? You're surrounded. Darn. It'll be impossible for me to get to the amoeba like this. They'll probably spot me if I lower the platform, and I'm certainly not going to be here, able to lady. get down using it without being seen. When Better I'm not move them, till I come up with a bright idea. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use the whip. That this? might be good. No, you don't if I use it a la Indiana Jones, I could swing to that outcropping on the wall and make my way down to the amoeba room. Though, it would be in cadaver form, since they're sure to see me jumping. Hey, wait. If I remember right, O'Connor said he would be on Channel 5. If I call him on the walkie-talkie and get him confused enough, maybe he could do the distracting. It's a little convoluted, but it can't hurt to try. <laughs> All LucasArts games refer, re, make lots of movie references. Maybe this is secretly oh, LucasArts. Do you copy? Gosh, Caddy, you are one royal pain. Soldier O'Connor, it's me, Colonel Basco, your intelligence service examiner. Oh, sorry, sir. I thought you were a moron. Uh, whatever. I just wanted to say you've passed all of the test stages satisfactorily, except the most important. Oh man! Like Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis? Just listen. You are to enter into the ruins screaming. My colonel, Professor Pignon, has run off toward the lake. I'll hop to it, my colonel. Run, soldier, run! Where in tarnation is he gone? Calm down, Nathan. He'll turn up sooner or later. Pignon has run to the lake, my colonel! Follow me. Down we go. <laughs> Man, Brian sure is, is athletic. I heard something. Come on, come on, come on. Run, Joshua. Hey, what's the big rush? Joshua, hold on tight. I'm actually surprised it doesn't take suction cups. Because it should take, as long as the first, like, letters are right. Alaska? Alaska. They're getting away, my lady. I'm real sorry. You won't be for long. Oh no. Brian, if anyone else were telling me this, I'd never believe it. Me neither, Sushi. The whole part about the amoeba is astounding. No, I was talking about Joshua. How could he be such a klutz? Sometime I'll tell you about the mess he made in our room. In your room? Yeah, when we left Mala, we passed by the hut I'd rented with Gina. I didn't have a cent on me since the plane crash. And I needed to pick up some money and clothes for the trip to Alaska. By plane again, I suppose? Only as far as Anchorage. Then, we hopped on a train to Fairbanks, and after that, a bus to Sicily, where this nice man offered to take us as close to our final destination as he could on his snowplow. And you finally met Professor Simon. We still <laughs> had to walk a ways through a snowy no man's No way, Claude. They would never do that. But that wasn't our final challenge. <laughs> Even worse no way, Mr. Fraction. They would never do that. His voracious appetite almost put an end to our little adventure. We were looking at the doors of Simon's house when... Chapter 4. All right. Moment of truth. So the, apparently this game glitches out on a lot of people in Chapter 4. I don't know what part of chapter four, but apparently chapter four runs like garbage for some people. 
Hopefully all of the hard work I put into getting this game to work and surpass the whatever nonsense goes on here. I'm finished. We're almost there. Professor Simon will give us something to eat. Or will he? Thank goodness we made it. The sun's going down. Mm, these berries look delicious. No, oh, don't eat the berries. Hello, my name's Brian Basco. I need to speak with Professor Simon. The man who knows does not speak. What? Excuse me, are you James Simon? Please, listen. I have a very important message for you. Not interested. Hey! I think I forgot to mention you have to say a password before I let you in. A password? Of course you didn't say anything. Let's see. What could that darn password be? And quit eating those berries. They could be poisonous. Hey, leave that alone. Tell me the password once and for all. You see, Professor Simon will say who knows what about the man who knows. And you have to answer him. Yes, you must tell him. Tell him. Oh dear, I'm feeling dizzy. Oh. I knew those berries would make you feel sick. Come on, just make a eight bit different of an characters. Remember the password, and you'll be able to recover it's good. the professor's house. I believe it was something like. Oh no, I'm sorry, I can't remember. It's all right. Calm down. When we were coming up here, I saw a shelter by a lake. We'll go up there, and I'm sure you'll remember that password after a bit of rest. Come on, I'll help you. Joshua, Way to go, Joshua. The fire is already lit. You rest and try to get over this as fast as possible. You've got to remember that darn password. Maybe you should try to do something about this. Who knows how long it'll take Joshua to recover. <laughs> Who if are you I talking insist, to? Maybe Professor Simon will let me into his house. By the way, when we were walking down to the shelter, we saw a pretty strange guy. He was wearing this humongous fur coat and taking pictures or something. <laughs> Who's Brian talking to? All right, what question are we on? A2? Uh... Not a single Kunoichi. That's kind of surprising. I fought a lost warrior that was uh, Deity 4, I think. wonder if it's the same guy. Let's see. I'm guessing the Enchantress is your friend. Uh, I forgot their name. Scooby something. Brooks was here. Hmm. That reminds me of a movie I just love. Bur Burke or Dave. Nice. Good luck to them. They're the only person I know that's in that's there. <laughs> No idea who else in the entire world is it even. I just see a few old bottles in the glass compartment at the top. All the others look empty. What about this knife? The blade's a little rusty. With this humid climate, I'm hardly surprised. I'll take it. I hope I don't have to use it on anyone. In that condition, it may not cut anyone, but it'll give them a nasty infection. Mm. Okay, if there's any oil inside, I might be able to use it. Looks like it's not full, but there's a little bit inside. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, firewood. I'll 
I'll take one piece of firewood. Oh, weighs so much, I can't imagine taking them all. How do I get out? Well, I guess it's for the best. I'll attempt to go find help to get us out of this crazy mess. Okay. Give me this. Too bad. It's empty. Hmm. I'll go see if I can find the guy I saw coming toward here. Hello there, my friend. Oh, no. Hello, my name is Brian. Wazowski. Ben Wazowski. Pleased to meet you, Ben. I couldn't stop to say hi before because and I had to take the my polar bear from Somnium Files. Yeah, I saw you two. What? Uh, so you needed to warm up a bit and you went overboard on the whiskey, huh? <laughs> Uh, no, no, not at all. He was fine until he ate some berries from a shrub. Uh, some big red juicy berries uh, uh, that look like cherries? Yeah, those are the ones. Don't say another word. I bet he's dizzy, has muscle aches, a hallucination, short-term memory loss. Exactly. How did you know? I've been observing the behavior of bears for years, and I see how they react when they ingest those berries, which they love, by the way. <laughs> I myself have tried them on occasion for experimental purposes. The, the effects take several days to pass unless... What? Unless what? Salmon. Salmon? Yes, salmon. Eating salmon practically counteracts all the effects of those berries. Mm. I myself have experienced it. Well, that's good news. So I just have to get my friend to eat some salmon and it'll go back to normal? Uh, yep, that's it. Uh, well, but there's a little detail you have to know. What? Uh, the salmon will only work if he eats it raw. In my earliest experiments, I tried cooking one over a fire with some W. Freedom fries. <laughs> and freedom fries as a side dish, but it was no good. Tasted fantastic, but it wouldn't counteract the effects of those berries. Uh, at first, I thought there was some difference between humans and bears' digestive systems, but then I got the idea to eat it raw, like a bear. And what happened? Uh, it was completely different. It tasted much better on the grill. I meant about the effect of the berries. Oh, yeah. They completely disappeared. Listen, Ben. Well, what's on your mind? Um. Do you know Professor Simon? The guy in the big house up there? Uh, not very well. I've seen him hiking around from time to time, and once in a while I walk by his house, but we haven't uh, chit-chatted much. I think he's kind of a loner. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know the password to get into Professor Simon's house, would you? Password? What I usually say is... Hey, ciao! I've come for my weekly package! Then I go in, grab the package of bear food the cook makes me, and hasta la vista. You may be asking yourself now, sure, it's for the bears and not for good old Ben himself? Well, it is. It's for the bears, and I can't believe you think that of me. Oh. Could you tell me if there's more than one door leading into his house? I can assure you it's not true. The wall goes around the perimeter of the house, and the only gate is the one by the intercom. I'm telling it's not you, not very tall I gate. All the way around it with a mad bear in hot pursuit behind me. Hmm. You think they'd open up if I pretended I was you? Since there's a camera as well as the intercom, and it wouldn't be good enough just to say you're me. I get the idea you're asking yourself. Will Ben lend me his bear suit so I can pass for him? Well, let me make things clear. The bear suit is sacred, and I don't sacred. lend it to anyone for anything in the world. He's been wearing it for the past six years. I think I can sneak into the house if I hide while you talk on the intercom. You had a stroke of bad luck. I only get in thanks to the cook, but I saw him heading for Sicily this morning, like he always does on his day off. And he won't be back until at least tomorrow morning. Uh, getting back to what I was saying? Yes. Impressive costume. 
Well, it isn't exactly a costume. It's actually a bear suit, but I, I haven't finished it. Yeah, now that you mention it, you're right. But the only bears with glasses that I can remember were in a fairy tale book. No siree. I wear them because I'm as blind as a bat. Plus, the bear suit is incomplete. I asked the guy from the pizzeria in Sicily, the closest city to here, to order it from the same website he bought his moose suit at. But they sent it without the head. And so I asked myself, what is a bear without a head? I don't know. The extra part of a hunting trophy? Uh, no, my friend. A bear suit is the same as a certain death. If I make my way into the pack looking like this, the bears will say, that one there, he isn't one of us. And whammy, they'll pounce on me, rip my head off with the paws. So I have to postpone my plans until they send me the missing head. I see. So, how did you get into bears? I used to play ice hockey on a pro team. You know, we go on a tour throughout Asia every summer. But one day, after a big fight, that left me in a daze. I got sick of it all. I escaped from the hospital, went home, started surfing channels, and without realizing it, I watched a whole movie about a bear that danced with bananas on its head. Afterward, they put on a French movie about an orphan bear. I cried my eyes out. Then, I took a walk to get some fresh air, and I ran right into a billboard that showed a polar bear enjoying a soft drink. I got mm. thirsty, so I tried to go into a coffee shop, but some doormen came out in these uh, strange leather outfits, and they said, Out of here, man. This place is for bears only. What a world, huh? Two hours later, I grabbed my suitcases, hopped on a plane, and came to Alaska in search of my destiny. I see. <laughs> There's a sound effect in the music that's playing here that I have heard a lot of in Fantasy Star Online. <laughs> it keeps giving me these PSO vibes. So, even though you have your work with the bears, don't you ever get bored? Idleness is the tool of the devil, Brian, and I don't have time for him. The few free moments I have for myself, I spend drinking some beer for my keg or playing a, the, the guitar for a spell. Since I know nothing about music, I have a great time making uh, funky noises. Mm. About what you said regarding your costume. It's a bear suit, Brian. A bear suit. Those claws on that backpack look pretty realistic. Ah, but the claws are the most important part of the bear. They are used for defense and for fishing salmon during fishing the season salmon. When they swim upstream. That's what my book says, anyway. I want to prove a revolutionary theory, though. What is that theory, you ask? Well, sorry, but I can't tell you. You look like a nice guy, but who knows if you'll go sell the story to National Geographic afterward. Nope, my friend, I'm sorry, but I can't. Does National Geographic still exist? <laughs> Could you repeat what you said about bears fishing with their claws, please? <laughs> well, my friend, that's the simplest thing in the world. First, they look for a hole in the ice, or they make one themselves. Then, they wait for a salmon to swim by, and bang! They dip in those claws and tear one out of the water. I've tried it a couple of times, but I'm just not talented at it. Mm. I'm more into fishing with a pole. People even read magazines. Yeah, I would assume that if they still existed, they're probably like internet only. Could you show me how to fish like a bear? I'd be delighted to, but I'm way too busy. Plus, I only understand it on a theoretical level, like I said. Practice makes perfect, they say, but uh, my schedule is full. Hmm. What time of year do the salmon swim back upstream? Oh, it lasts almost half the year, from mid-spring to well into the fall, so the river is teeming with them now. But be careful with that ice, because it can crack. And some careless bears have ended up at the bottom of the river. Three bear hands at the bottom of the river. Could I borrow a fishing pole? I could if I had one. But the last time I went fishing, I accidentally pricked a cub in his private parts with a fish hook. I don't think it did him much harm, but boy, was he mad. He chased after me till he wore out. 
We ran in circles for hours around Professor Simon's house. When I got back to the river, my fishing pole was gone. <sighs> D-E-A-R. Bare hands. These, these hands right here. Polar bear hands. What really shocks me is your bear costume. There you go again. Didn't I tell you it isn't a costume? Hmm. What will you do when you finish making the bear suit? What am I gonna do? Infiltrate the group and demonstrate my theory about... No, I better not tell you. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be joining the Denner Bears, and they'll think I'm one of them. Will the suit be good enough, you're asking? Hell no. But I can pass it off if I put some Bear Essence perfume on first. I make it myself. Yeah. Bear Essence? Don't tell me you liquefy bears to make perfume. No, pal. I make the essences using bear droppings. I won't be so rude as to explain all of their bodily fluids, hairs, and the solid waste they produce. But, I will tell you, I need gloves and my hockey mask to gather it all up. How many kinds of bear essences do you have? I have essences of newborn cub, she-bear in heat, republican bear, ferocious bear, buddhist bear, myopic bear, honey-loving bear. Papa Bear, the bear by the strawberry tree, an ant-eating bear, a bear with a gastric disorder. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I drank that one on accident. Intellectual Bear. What? And who knows how many more? I, more I don't know, instances. Claude. What I like is your costume. But will you never learn to call my suit by its proper name? I have nothing against bears, Ben, but your lecture about them was uh, a little over my head. No, man, don't you worry. We all have our little flaws. Uh-huh. I needed to learn about... Uh, eating raw... I was supposed to go to the conversation. So you learn about eating raw fish and bear essences. Uh, forget it. Get back to your work. Okie dokie. You know where to find me. If you don't see me around here, it's because I'm at home. You'll recognize the house. It's a typical ranger's cabin, raised several yards off the ground. Come by whenever you want. That way, you can try my homemade beer. Thanks, Ben. See you around. Okay. All arms one lightning round, and you've lost. Better get back to the cabin. I'm gonna go check on Joshua. <laughs> Claude. I have to find some way to make him come too. Maybe a good slap would do the trick. Trantor's been destroyed by a huge meteor. Joshua. No! Say it isn't true! Nothing's happened to Trantor. You just need to eat some raw salmon to remember the password. Raw salmon? A lunatic wouldn't eat that. Ketchup and freedom fries? Not even with some W ketchup and freedom fries? Yuck, I can't stand ketchup. What I really like doesn't go with salmon. I'm more of a fiend for chocolate, shakes, vanilla ice cream, donuts, peanut butter, apple pie, maple syrup, caramel smoothies. Mm. Is there no way to convince you? No, Brian. I am a civilized person. A decent Trato Japanese American. And I don't eat raw animals. You think I'm some sort of polar bear? Japanese? So you do have some Japanese blood in you? Of course, what do you think? My ancestors were samurai. I believe my grandpa's the one who came to the States, but I haven't really studied the family tree. Well, if you're Japanese, whatever, you must love sushi, right? Oh, hi, Bryanson. 
mackerel, tuna, halibut, octopus. It's almost the only gourmet food I enjoy, besides dessert. What about salmon? Do you dig salmon sushi? Well, if salmon there's nothing sushi. else going around, yeah, I'll eat it with pleasure. By the way, did I mention I'm dying of starvation? I'll get you a salmon, or my name's not Brian. Don't you worry. You'll be getting ready <laughs> for the most delicious plate of sushi you've ever had in a jiffy. In a jiffy. Oh, dear, Brian. We geniuses don't cook. If nobody's around to make our meals, we just order out for pizza or bite our nails. But under no circumstances would we waste any time on something as mundane as cooking. Wow. He was hard to convince, but this is better than nothing. I have no choice but to look for someone who will teach me to make salmon sushi. Mm-hmm. Are there freedom fries, Amy? Freedom fries. Yes, thank you, Claude. <laughs> Sounds like a good spot to stop. Trivia Sushi. That way I'll remember. All right. 